Hello and welcome to Osmeo's instructional video showing how to properly install the BNB Nova Pro reverse osmosis system. We'll be explaining and showing the process step by step and giving advice on how to make the installation as smooth as possible. Let's make sure you have all the necessary tools you'll need. An electric drill, 5mm, 7mm and a 12mm drill bit. Adjustable wrench and the pipe wrench and the Phillips head screwdriver. For the next step, let's assemble the feed water system. Be sure you have the diverter valve, the metal ball valve, and the BTFE tape with you. Apply BTFE tape around the diverter valve, mail thread connection side and the same for the metal ball valve. After what? Screw the ball valve into the diverter valve and make a full tightening with a spanner. Now we will fit the diverter valve between the main cold water feed, which normally has a half inch male thread connection, and the cold water line with half inch female thread to sink. Make sure to use the BTFE tape on the male thread to make sure the connection is watertight. You can use the spanner to support the diverter valve while tightening connections with a wrench. To connect the system to drain, we need drain saddle kit, marker pen, Phillips head screwdriver, electric drill and a 7mm drill bit. It is important to choose the correct place for the drain saddle as it should be above the water level on the drain U-band. First we take the drain saddle and the marker pen to mark the correct spot. Then we use the drill drill a hole into the drain pipe. Use the plastic fastening nut first and slide it on the tubing. Then slide the tubing through the hole on the drain saddle and fasten the plastic nut. Take the adhesive pad, remove the protective film and slide it on the inner surface of the drain saddle with the adhesive side of the foam pad facing the drain saddle. For the next step place the drain saddle with the tubing onto the drain pipe and make sure the tubing will go through the hole first. Then use the bolts and nuts to connect the drain saddle back part to the front part. You can tighten the bolts with a Phillips screwdriver. In order to install the reverse osmosis membrane, first remove the tubing from the membrane housing inlet elbow and pull the top of the membrane housing backwards. Now twist the membrane housing cap in counterclockwise rotation to remove it and expose the open end of the membrane housing. If the membrane housing cap is difficult to rotate off, use the membrane housing wrench included to assist. Install the reverse osmosis membrane filter 
first by removing it from the protective bag and inserting it double o-ring end first inside of the membrane housing. Make sure the membrane filter is firmly and deep in the membrane housing before closing the cap hand tight. Finally push the membrane housing back into place and connect the membrane housing inlet elbow tubing. Endura flat surface is available on the other side of the worktop before marking the spot to drill. It is to make sure that the plastic flange will fit between the copper sidewalls and the sink itself. To fit the single dispensing tap, first we need to find the correct place for the tap and mark the spot with a marker pen. In this case we will use first 5mm drill bit to drill the pre-hole and then 12mm drill bit to drill the hole for the tap threaded stem. For the next step we take the tap, the decorative base plate and the rubber gasket and place the tap through the worktop. On the other side of the worktop we will use faucet nut, locking washer and the flange. First we will fit the flange, then the locking washer, tap with a faucet nut, first with the hand and then we tighten it with an adjustable wrench. Now we will connect the tubing to the tap. For that we will use the tubing nut first and slide it on the tubing. Then the tubing ring, which is slided as well on the tubing. And for the last thing, we insert the tubing pin at the top of the tubing. Then push it into the tap, tighten with the tubing nut, with a fan at first. And to properly fix the tubing to the tap, we use adjustable wrench. Once all three pieces of white tubing is connected, for the next step we can now connect up the filter system. In order to do that, first we will remove the three planking plugs which cover the connections for the three connections. We can connect the tap to the clean water outlet, the waste tubing to the wastewater and the main water feed to the feed water. We will secure the connections by placing back the black clips. Once we have fitted the filter system, for the next step we can open up the tap. In this example we have connected the filter system to a three-way tap. Then slowly open up the ball valve to get the feed water from the mains into the filter unit. Now we can use the system power cord and simply plug it into an electrical socket and to power up the unit we can press the on off button during the system boot up process, the system will sound a series of beeps and the LED lights in top and the front of the system will activate. After the beeps, the system will commence by first the flush process, which can be observed from the onboard digital panel. This process will last for 90 seconds and the system will next enter the pump cycle, which also can be observed from the digital panel. 
In this process the system will start producing water which can be seen running from the faucet. Let's confirm that the pump activates by looking at the pump pressure monometer which is located at the right hand side from the digital display. The reading that you can be expecting should be at least over 3 bar pressure. Also, please make sure the DDS reading, which shows total dissolved solids, activates and stabilizes below 40 ppm. Once we finish dispensing water, the system will go into the standby mode and you can observe it on the display which is showing the tank is full. To verify the installation, while the system is in the tank full mode, read the inlet pressure manometer and make sure that it is above 2.5 bars. This is the feed water pressure to the system and it will not operate efficiently under this pressure. Again, while the system is in tank full mode, inspect all the water connections and make sure there are no leaks. The system should be given 10 to 20 minutes to make sure the pressure has stabilized enough. Do not forget to open the top cover of the system and to look for leaks inside. The BMP digital controller enhances the system performance and user experience. It will display produced water TDS, temperature, track filter lifetime, before motor flush of membranes, monitor operation mode and protect the system from common failures and much more. The digital controller has three buttons in the front for the user to interact with, that is menu, login and flush. To check the display for the days left until the next filter change, you can press the login button to go back to the main menu, press the menu button. After the annual filter change, we need to reset the filter lifetime. In order to do that, we can press and hold the menu button until we hear the beep. To check if filter reset was successful, we can press the login button which should display now 365. To bring the system into a long flush mode, press the flush button on the display. After that the system will flush for 90 seconds and shut it off automatically. There might be need to use the flush button if the system normal process is interrupted, for an example by significant drop in incoming water quality which might clog the membranes, or if the filter system hasn't been in use for a longer period. If there is a need to remove the filter system from the cupboard, for example when replacing the filters, first close the bowl valve to shut off the feed water. Second thing, open up the tap to let out the excess pressure. And for the third, remove all the tubing to be able to pull out the system from the cupboard. Each of the pre-filters have locking mechanism on the top. To remove the pre-filter, bring the lock to the open position with one hand and twist the pre-filters in counterclockwise fashion with the other hand until the filter is completely detached. Do the same for the other two filters. When installing the new pre-filters, insert the top of the filters into the empty filter cap. The filter might need to rotate it 
a bit back and forth until the thread locking is felt. Now rotate the pre-filter slowly in clockwise fashion until the click of the lock is heard, which means the filter is successfully installed. To replace the reverse osmosis membranes, first remove the tubing from the membrane housing inlet elbow and pull the top of the membrane housing backwards. Twist the membrane housing cap in counterclockwise rotation to remove it. If the membrane housing cap is difficult to rotate, use the membrane housing wrench to assist. Once the cap is removed, have a jog or other similar object to pour out the excess water while removing the membrane. Use the needle hose pliers to pull out the membrane from the housing. To remove the post filters, there are two push fit connections which need to be disconnected. First, the inlet to the filters and secondly outlet from the filters. Please have a cloth with you if there is some water leaking from the filters. To fit the new set of post filters, attach the filter set into the filter holder at the back of the unit. Next step is to connect the right hand side stem fitting into the inlet of the mineralizing filter and then connect the left hand side stem fitting into the outlet of the detox filter. Make sure to secure the filter set properly into the filter holder and fit back the clips to secure the push fit connections. Thank you for joining us. We hope you find this video informative and helpful. If you have any further questions related to this video, feel free to contact us on our customer service line 0800 002 9533.